All right, so let's talk about the solar system controller. Once you've attached the data cable, which comes with the controller, to the light fixture into the import, and once you've switched over to controller mode on the switch on the bottom of the fixture, power up, and you're ready to set up the controller. So when you take the controller out of the box, the first thing you'll see is the home screen. The home screen will have a time, which uh, may be programmed, but if it's not your time zone, you need to set the time. Go to your setup page, set time, and you should have your current time, go back. Next, you have up to 10 programs that you can save into memory. These are also accessed through setup, edit programs, and in this way, you can rename each step, like early veg, full veg, veg, pre-flower, flower, example, and make each of your settings, which I'll show you briefly in a second. Also, you have the readout of what the current program is, what the current spectrum setting is, your percentage in red, white, and blue on the home screen. You also show what time the lights come on, what time the lights come off based on your program. You also have the week and the day for your calendar schedule, all displayed on the home screen. Also on the home screen is a manual button. When you go into manual button, there's a timer, which will revert back, or you can push override. Now in manual mode, you can set from zero to 100% the red, white, and blue. Uh, you also have a view mode, when you're in view mode, you get a very pleasant natural white light. This is very handy. Even when you're doing an automated program, you come in, you want to work in the garden, you hit view mode, you have a very pleasant white. The blue and the red tend to be really hard on your eyes. Uh, they're very intense. So view mode is a very handy thing. Also, you see, well, you can go 100% red, white, blue. Then the arrows, the large X's, will increase it by 10%. The small x will increase it by 1%. On the negative side, the large negative will reduce it by 10% jumps. The small negative will reduce it by 1%. So you can jump adjust up and down on any of the colors. So if you're just programming in manual mode, let's say you just want to set up a bloom schedule, you're going to run that for eight weeks, whatever. Once you set it in manual mode, you can just unplug the controller, the light will stay in that mode, and it will re remember that particular setting. So even if you power off the controller, the light will stay in that mode. Even if you turn off the light, it will remember what mode it was in. When you turn the light back on, it'll still be in that mode. So you can use this to manually program it and just use a normal timer, it comes off and on, it'll always remember that setting. You wanna change the setting, just come back to the controller, Plug it in, turn it on. You can go back to manual mode. You can set whatever settings you're looking for. You also have fully automatic mode, which you access through going into setup. Then you have a way to edit programs. You can have up to 10 programs in a particular day. So you can, it goes one through 10 in the program. You can rename each step, like it could be, uh, propagation, early veg, veg, pre-flower, different settings for each step, up to 10 steps. You can rename each step so you'll know exactly what it was and save each one. <clears throat> and then once you save it, you have all those programs in memory. So through editing steps, that allows you to do a series of steps, set the spectrum in each step for exactly what you want it, rename it, then edit the steps, you can adjust what the light level of each spectrum in each step. Then you set the time on, time off. This function as your digital timer. Whatever amount of time you enter will show you the total hours on in this little window here. You can also program automatic sunrise, sunset. The little window to the right just tells how long you want the time from zero to the full light. So that could be in minutes, could be one minute, five minutes, 10 minutes. We always suggest using sunset mode. So you gently turn the lights on, turn the lights off from five to 10 minutes. The plants will stress out if you change abruptly. This is the very important screen. The spectrum level, the time on, time off in up to 10 different programs, sunrise, sunset. Then once you save that, it'll be in memory. 
The other important feature on the setup page is the calendar function. Now this allows you to do day by day, week by week setting through your entire growth cycle. So you can set a certain number of days, an early veg, normal veg, you can transition to pre-flower, transition to flower, and then even have a final finishing stage all set automatically. I, I won't go into all the programming details right now, but if you contact uh, our, through via our website, we have very elaborate instructions. Allow, it's a very powerful tool to get, really simulate nature through the seasons. You also have uh, the ability to display the week and the day through your entire cycle. So on the home screen, you'll know if you're in week, week seven of bloom, what day, you'll know what the setting is, what time the light's coming on off. It gives you the entire layout. So the, the controller is a very powerful tool. Either you use it manually to set at once and forget it, turn it off, and then the lights will remember. You can do it on a daily basis. You can program on a day, week, or even different programs during the day, so you have a very flexible, powerful tool. It has a battery backup, so it won't lose its memory. One controller will control an unlimited number of lights. You simply piggyback the data cord from the import to the outport. Unlimited number of lights will all receive the commands. This is compatible with all of the lights in the solar system series. Uh, you can even mix the different power lights uh, together in a single network or program them individually. If you're programming this in a manual mode, you could program an unlimited number of lights and each one of them could be in a different spectrum setting. However, if you're using it in automatic mode, this must be connected to the lights because it's sending commands on off, it's changing uh, light settings. So the controller needs to be plugged in, it needs to be active. So that means if you have three lights, uh, let's say in a bloom room, they need their own controller. Now if you have a separate room for veg, those will need a separate controller because they're issuing different commands and they have to be dedicated. So obviously a key question is what spectrum do you use during what phase of growth? Uh, this is a very controversial subject. Everybody has their own strategy, different strains like different uh, intensity levels and light levels. In general, we like to, smaller plants can use a lower intensity so you can dim whatever setting, dim it down for smaller plants. You can raise it up a bit in veg. Once you get to bloom, you're generally going full blast on whatever your settings is. So then if we talk about what spectrum would we suggest in different phases of growth, in the early phases, we want to minimize red, not eliminate it, but have a lower percentage of red, like down to 20, 30% of the setting in red. A lot of power in red, and you don't need that power in early veg. You don't even need it in veg. You want high blue, high white for early propagation, but maybe less intensity, maybe not full blast, maybe at 50%. Then as you go more into veg, you get more intensity. You still want to have a very high blue-white ratio with a minimal red. This is key to avoid stretching. It gives you bushy plants, little spacing between the nodes. This is the type of veg growth that most people want. Once you transition to bloom, you slowly raise the red and you back off the blue. This is a key feature. High red gives you good yield. That is why HPS yields well and fluorescent won't. Fluorescent works great in veg because it's a lot of blue. HPS works great in bloom, you have a lot of red. Here you can do that with the same light. So very high levels of red in, in bloom, back off the blue. Less light, less blue will give you more yield and much tighter buds. Most people don't understand this. They think more light is better. Less blue in bloom will give you better yield. Then one strategy that a lot of advanced growers use, towards the end of the cycle, once you've already got your yield, you go back to a heavy blue and you back off the red. The blue is more responsible for smells, terpenes, chemical profiles, especially in THC and CBDs. So you do a final finishing mode where at the very end of your cycle, the blue comes up and you back the red off once you've got your yield. So there's a lot more strategies involved in this and we encourage you to look at our website. We have a lot of other suggested recipe levels, light levels, but in general, that's 
how you can use this powerful tool to maximize your results.